I have taken the famous and challenging canoe route known as the Minas Lake and transposed it to follow backcountry roads and trails in and around Algonquin Provincial Park, creating a 400 kilometer, nine day bike packing expedition. Follow me on my journey. Good morning! This is our campsite. Every morning I like to go over a plan with you guys and do a little monologue. I don't know why, it just feels like the right way to start off a video. We are one day away from completing uh, the uncertainty of this. I don't know if you heard that, so I'm in the woods. Um, the one day away from completing the uncertainty of this trip, meaning that we will no longer have the uh, questionable gray area logging roads. I have two options this morning. I was looking at the map. Option A is go back to where we came up to the logging road that is completely clear. Take that down to the town there. I forget what it's called, like Madawaska maybe or something like that. And then cut in on Highway 60 up to Opiongo. That will add about 20 kilometers to the trip, but it is guaranteed. You know what I mean? Like it's guaranteed to happen. Option number two is here. Was that A and this too? Whatever. This represents pain and suffering for everybody involved, including you, because I'm going to share it with you. So I'm going to close my eyes. You're going to tell me, do we go with option A, which is a wonderful ride, pleasant, wonderful people. Everything's amazing. Option A or option two? Pain and suffering, and clearly a trip that men my age should not be doing. Close my eyes. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm uh, receiving your thoughts. We're going down there. Are you a stuffer or a roller? That's today's question. Semi good vibes so far, semi good vibes. You know, certainly not completely open, but every kilometer that we knock off like this, one less kilometer of bushwhacking if it does actually close up. Some larger challenges. Sun is out. Friggin' beautiful. A little section here by the water. You can see a lake and hear some rushing water. So I just caught a glimpse of that rushing water it looks like a dam it actually looks like a dam and i wonder if that dam isn't how the old logging you can't see i, I gotta get somewhere closer but oh, i wonder if uh if that dam is how they used to cross or maybe it's not a dam maybe it's like some kind of bridge but it looks looks like it's got those boys anyway it shouldn't be much further but that's a big crossing. That's a big crossing if there's nothing to do. I'm not gonna be able to do it with my bike, that's for sure. All right, one challenge at a time. Quit being a baby. Let's go. Looks like it's a significant engineering masterpiece. Oh 
Oh yeah. Guys? I think the best route is right along here. And the sooner we get it done, the better. Just to get it out of the way. So, you know, good thing we try and keep the shoes dry, right? Much less dramatic than I thought. Let's get out of here. See, so we take these challenges one at a time. Not a big deal. Cross that off the list. There's also a guy in a boat over there. I don't know if you can see him. Just that way. But this is it. I sincerely believe we may have some bushwhacking now. So the way from the bridge looks to go straight and then right. Just gonna scout a bit to make sure that we're going the right way. The terrain has gotten extremely rough very quickly. So no big deal, but we do want to make sure. So yeah, I guess we gotta do some work over these logs. It's all right. The good thing was that the dam wasn't a big deal. So now we just gotta figure out how to get through this stuff. I'm actually thinking <clears throat> that maybe we just go through the woods here. Might get a little bit easier line than this. A jugular. <clears throat> I believe this is the way. What's happening here? Okay, <clears throat> what do you think guys? Looks better. I know some of you are thinking, Steve, this is terrible. And it is. <clears throat> but what you have to understand is that it's better than the bushwhacking that I've done in the past. So, let's just see what happens. There isn't really a trail anymore, a little bit of a game trail. That's about it. Oh my. Oh my. So, I decided just to go straight through the meat. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit dense that way. I looked in the inside, it looked like just as much pain as just going straight through and maybe this is the last one. There's one other uh, challenge that we have, well we have two. We have to wait for the active logging road, but the second challenge is that there's this thing here. Camboos Camp. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that means. If that's a ranger station, if that's like a private camp, but we go right by it. So I anticipate, you know, having to go fast and not look at it. Couple more blowdowns. Okay.
Oh my god, it's like chocolate milk coming out of these things. On trips of this length, foot care management is very important. You don't want to be struggling. Even my insoles, watch this. Terrible, just terrible. Hoping that this is my last water crossing though. We are taking a five minute break to dry the feet, make sure the toenails don't come off and squeeze out some of the excess water from the soles of our shoes and our socks. I wanted to introduce you to something that I picked up this year, the Garmin InReach Mini. Now, you guys know that I love navigating. I actually really enjoy uh, map and compass orienteering. Um, so I try my best to do that on almost all my trips. And up until this year, that's all I've ever done. On all my trips previously, it was all map and compass. Um, I find that in the last like couple of years, I'm starting to do some trips that are a little bit more like off the beaten path, I guess. You know, something like this where it's really confusing, really hard. Um, it's tough to judge mileage and stuff like that. So I have invested in this. And I also bring my smartphone, um, which has, I think it's called Earthware or something, Earth, Earth something. Anyway, what I do on something like this trip is I use this primarily for messaging my wife, to be honest. Every day I have uh, two presets, my wife, Perry, who you've met, and um, my sister, Krista, who you have not met. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I did a video a long time ago. I think she was in it. So every night when I get to my campsite, I just send a preset message saying like, hey, I'm okay. And it tells me where they are. You can actually um, send um, custom messages, but it's really hard because there's no keypad. So if you guys are old like me, you'll remember back in the day when you wanted to send a text, you had to like, if you wanted to do A, B, or C, you'd have to press like two, one, two, and that would give you a B. This hat is even worse. It's just got an up, down, an entire scroll of the alphabet. So it takes quite a while to write something. I think there's a limit as well. So I only use it for the preset messages for the most part. Um, I've not linked this to the phone. I find that the phone with that um, Earth map, whatever it's called, uh, software works pretty well. Now, let me tell you how I actually put this trip together and got it into the GPS. So I took Jeff's map and, you know, did some research. Actually, I took a bunch of maps, took the back road map book, but that's garbage. Don't ever buy that. Um, but basically Jeff's maps, I looked at all the logging roads and where I could connect it to. And then I went on Google Earth and I zoomed in as much as I could to see where roads existed to make sure they still existed. And honestly, the parts that I couldn't see on Google Earth are the parts that I was bushwhacking. Like actually here, I'm pretty sure I could still see it, but I know on day three, I think it was day three on the way to Ramona, I remember not being able to see it and thinking, oh, you know what? They're probably just like trees have overgrown. Probably you can go underneath. I didn't realize how bad it was gonna be. So um, that's what I do. So I, I, I I plot it in Google Earth, then I export it and I import it into the Garmin software and it puts it on my phone. It's actually amazing. And the phone is, I don't know, I never knew. Like the GPS is good, you just press it, it tells you where you are everywhere. And I don't have my, uh, I don't have any service. It just works like that. So that works pretty good. Um, if you want me to send you a message, you gotta be one of my presets. Comment below and I'll add you. I won't really, but anyway. Five more minutes and we'll get going. Have you seen what's up there? Look, already. It's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs>
guess is that we have made it to the logging road proper the primary one I think anyway so we're at the road I my understanding is that that's where the actual active logging is but you can see the road isn't even cleared here. So, you know, I was thinking like, that's just the plan. Maybe there's no one actually on this road today. So what I'm gonna do is we're probably an hour from Opiongo. Uh, I'm not gonna do much filming. It's gonna let her rip. And honestly, man, if I get caught, I get caught. If I don't, perfect. But it, I'm not gonna sit here for five hours when the road's not even cleared. Okay, let's go. We did it. We did it. Well, I've got a park permit. And this is it, man. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Oh, now I'm gonna get the picture. Say goodbye to Opiango Algonquin Outfitters. There was nothing much to do there. Chatted with him. There was no ice cream. I actually met a really nice guy uh, just outside. He was actually a rep hockey and lacrosse player. Just started camping and he loves it. So, I don't know. It's nice to hear that you know, people are finding out about camping and enjoying it. I think it's kind of a, a very um, responsible thing to teach your kids how to do tough it out in the wilderness anyway we're gonna try and make our way to lake of two rivers or something like that down the old rail trail across the main campground at mew lake probably three four hours of biking We are pumped. Oh my God. So I've confirmed that this is the road we need to take. It takes us to Rock Lake. It's the end of the Algonquin uh, Rail route, whatever it is. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I'm not showing any footage from Highway 60 because it's absolutely terrible. Like any of the any of the, the the highways, I'm just not. It's a waste. It's a waste of battery. It's not even exciting. But we're headed down here. Welcome to Rock Lake Campground or Rock Lake. Okay, here's the cool part. This is where the old rail trail starts, the actual official one, not the illegal one that I did last year, like the one here. And this will take us right to Mew Lake. There's a store there, there's a restaurant, 
and we're gonna see if we can get a campsite. I don't know what's gonna happen, but let's see. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of people here. It should be relatively flat, so it's not that big a deal. We'll just have some fun. And because it's actually an old railway, um, the grade has to be very low either way. I think 3%. So that's what's nice about taking this as opposed to Highway 60, which might, well, first of all, is terrible and has some undulating up and downs. This here is gonna be awesome. I'm very excited about this. 12 kilometers will take me two hours probably. I'm just gonna cruise. Ooh. Nobody knows where that goes. Guys, funny enough, they have a campsite at Mew Lake, number eight, and it's actually an electrical site. It's the only one they had left. So I get a little electrical site, and I'm telling you, people are going to laugh their ass off when they see my little tent at an electrical site. They're gonna think it's amazing. Right now we're gonna go to Lake of Two Rivers store and see what they have there. Then we're gonna go set up. Did you see that menu? Oh man! Okay, this is what we're gonna do. This is the plan. We're gonna go to the site. We're gonna set the site up. That's what we're gonna do first. Hang the food, get everything ready. Then I'm gonna go buy a bag or two of firewood. Maybe some kindling. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna start that thing. Bring that back. Then I'm gonna come around 7:30, 8 o'clock, right, just as it's getting dark, and buy a burger and fries. I'll bring it back to my campsite and gnaw it. That's the plan. Best part is that I'm sleeping with all the campers because it's an electrical site. So guys, this is actually the funniest thing in the world. So I'm in the RV camping area <laughs> with my little bike and my little tent and everyone's like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, take a look around. It's honestly the best. So we're all set up. Mission number one is figure out how to get some wood here. I'm gonna buy some from the office. Thinking about strapping it to the front. Okay. Let's see if this works or if I die. Balancing trick. I said it couldn't be done. Firewood, pit, chair, tent. Now we just need to get some food. I've got so much, so much to show you. Just hold on, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> All you need to know is be very, very excited. This is gonna be my kindling today, guys. <clears throat> Completely disappointed with the accuracy of this map. Here we go. It's waterproof. I'm not joking. It's a waterproof map, but I can't cut it. It's amazing. Does it even burn? It does burn. Goodbye, my map. That's what I think of the Kearney map. Now let me show you what else we got. Okay. Don't be mad. Oh, man. Did you see that? And, and, the Caesar salad, and the Schweppes. 
So I'm going to take the evening off and just relax, but I'll see you guys just before I go to bed. I'm just going to just going to relax. That's all I'm going to do.